Welcome back to Dead Good Book Reviews. I'm Judith and you're watching another episode of Overbooked here on the channel. This is the series where I talk about every single book on my shelves because I'm working for a dragon and they asked me to. Today we are talking about Patricia Reed's The Enchanted Forest Chronicles. <laughs> Quick disclaimers before we start, I was gifted these books by my very, very dear friend Asha, aka A.D. Hart. You should go check out her books as a result because she gifts me nice things. I'm gonna promote her works. They are very good. I've talked about her before on the channel. Regardless of where books come from, nobody's paying me to talk about books except my patrons and all opinions are my own. I'm gonna keep this as spoiler free as humanly possible. Uh, this is a series from the 90s, so I might be a little bit less strict with my spoilering because especially I want to talk a little bit about the last book and why that matters. If you do want to go into these books knowing absolutely nothing, click away now. And I will link the story graph for the series down below in case you want to check out any user generated content warnings. This is a young adult middle grade. It kind of came out before those categories were quite so regimented. So it falls a little bit between fantasy series written by Patricia Reed in the 90s. It's a little bit confusing because some of these say that books later in the series came out before books that came out earlier in the series and I was trying to make sense of the copyright pages and it didn't quite work so let's say early to late 90s. <laughs> Patricia Reed is an author who has written all sorts of things she's based in the Twin Cities and one of the things she has written is some Star Wars content so if you've read the Star Wars novelizations you may have read her works before. These are the only Patricia Reed books I know that I have read. Sometimes these things crop up and I've read things that I don't know I've read in this case, I think these are the only ones. We have these very, very shiny copies, so please excuse the glare. Dealing with dragons, searching for dragons, calling on dragons, and talking to dragons are the four books that I have in the Enchanted Forest series. I think they are all of them. There might be a short story or two I'm missing. Uh, I have them, they came in this little slipcase. That's why I have the four. Princess by birth, adventurer by choice. Meet Princess Cimmerine, a princess who refuses to be proper. She is everything a princess is not supposed to be. Headstrong, tomboyish, and smart, and bored. So bored that she runs away to live with a dragon. And not just any dragon, but Kazul, one of the most powerful and dangerous dragons around. Of course, Cimmerine has a way of hooking up with dangerous characters. And soon she's coping with a witch, a djinn, a death-defying talking bird, a stone prince, and some very oily wizards. If this princess ran away to find some excitement it looks like she's found plenty it's gonna it's gonna be shiny whichever way i point it but just it's there for solidarity and support this is a very very classic feeling story i think if you're getting very 90s middle grade princess but in like a a fun way almost worst witch energy to it kind of story you'd be right they are huge amounts of fun biggest selling point very enjoyable fun romp kind of adventure books there are high stakes there are interesting things to give an example to kill the wizards they don't actually kill them they melt them with soapy water and then they reform later it's that kind of story where the consequences are dire but also kind of the consequences are not the worst <laughs> i really like this kind of classic fantasy tone. It reminds me a little bit of a kind of middle grade version of those really old Dungeons and Dragons book covers that are incredibly camp. Like there's something very camp about these that definitely hits that nostalgia button, at least for me. The plots feel very familiar, but at the same time, they don't feel boring or overly, <sighs> overly derivative. I think probably because other things are deriving from this kind of storytelling. And yes, just a huge amount of fun. I had a great time reading these. I had previously read the first two, so this was my, I reread those and then I read the last two for the first time, just to give you the full context of my reading experience. The characters have oodles of spunk from the Princess Cimmerine herself, who is not like other princesses, but like in a non-horrible way where it doesn't feel super misogynistic also, to kings, to dragons, to kings of dragons, to oily wizards, all of them have a lot of heart and uh, just a lot of classic fantasy to them. They feel very bold. It feels like a book written in very bright colors, which is an odd way of describing something, but that is how it feels. I do think that the characters only get better as the series goes on. I think book one has a little bit, maybe just a touch more of that, I'm not like other princesses who are all wet blankets. Uh, it gets a little bit like that right at the start, but it definitely stops feeling that way fairly quickly. I wouldn't be worried about it if I were giving it to somebody in the same way as other books of that time period. You go, oh no, 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 
take that one away, put that to it. No. I think probably my favourite character, which I don't think will surprise anyone, is Morwen the No-Nonsense Witch, who I'm fairly sure I know in real life uh, and that person knows who they are. Hugely enjoyable characters. I think some of the people you meet later on I liked less, but that's because I'm always someone who's gonna like the core cast of a book the most. It's just how I am. In terms of the magical side of this, we're in an enchanted forest. Does it deliver on that element? I'd say yes. I think it manages to create a classic fantasy world, uh, but brings in some stuff that you don't necessarily see all the time in this magical world. The dragons have like an interesting culture to them. The idea of dragons having princesses as their kind of servants I guess until the princesses get rescued and the logistics of that and everything all very interesting. I like the way that magic works. It's very sort of free form, not a hard magic system but the characters kind of feel like there is. It's a good time. It hits everything I want to do in terms of we're not gonna let logistics and stuff get in the way of telling a fun story but where it would be fun to include those logistics we're gonna add them in uh, and it just feels like masterful like simple storytelling. I think overall that was my take is that while it is a series that has some serious elements to it it does not take itself too seriously. It knows what it's doing, it knows exactly the tone it's trying to set and it holds fast to that throughout. There are some sad moments, there are some tragic moments but it overall doesn't detract from the feeling of the series as a whole. It does have some uh, middle grade YA 90s insta love elements to it, which I feel fits with the tone of the books. I feel it fits with this idea of we're not going to think too hard about this, this is the storytelling that we're doing, we're basing this in sort of fairy tale elements, there is an element of insta love to this. However, if that's an immediate no for you, worth bearing in mind, particularly book two. Talking to Dragons book four was my least favourite book of all four because it does not follow same main characters and it really felt like an add-on and I'm not 100% sure if it would have felt that way reading it at the time. So if you grew up with these, let me know how you feel about book four. Just for me, didn't work as well. So know that it's not as consistent all the way through to the end. I think book one and two are fabulous and book three and four were a bit a bit of an add-on, but still a good time reading them, just I don't think they're essential. One of the things is, it, because the tone is so specific, if you don't get on with the tone in book one, you'll know that you don't like these. You will 100% be clear. I personally feel like that's a very good thing. I like to know when I'm not going to like a book. I don't like to get 300 pages into something before I realise that it wasn't for me and now I've got to slog through to the end. Just something to bear in mind, if you pick these up, pick up book one, see how you go. I have a feeling that had I read these when I was an actual kind of, I probably, I want to say like 11, 12 year old, maybe even younger, they would have become an enormous part of my personality. I can really see myself getting too into this series and reading it and having these editions, they would be dog-eared messes. Uh, it is only because I'm reading them as a grown up that I have these qualms uh, and nitpicks and so such. Reading them as a child, I would have had a wonderful time. I'm very tempted to loan this set to basically all the children that I know because I just think they're so much fun. I don't feel like they've got super dated. I wasn't really reading them with that in mind. I didn't feel that way at any point, really. I don't remember feeling that way anyway. And yeah, I just, I think they're fun. I think they're fun and they don't take themselves too seriously. And I don't ask for much from this kind of book. That was a good time. I'm glad that I finally got around to finishing the last few books. Other things to read, some other things you might like. Uh, A.D. Hart is the person who gifted me these books and it's really hard to deny the influence these books and others like them have had on her writing. If you like fantasy series that have just impeccable storytelling instincts, I highly recommend checking out her stuff, both in the Once Upon a Winter and Once Upon a Summer anthologies and also Indie Bites magazine. You can check out pretty much all of her stuff. I'll ask her where best to link below. Is a personal friend, not paying me to say any of this. I also think there's some T. Kingfisher books that are very similar in not taking themselves too seriously. T. Kingfisher tends to lean a little bit darker, but perhaps something like Wizard's Guide to Defensive Baking, I think does similar things with the world building and some of the tone. Should you read this? If you have a penchant for nostalgic YA middle grade fantasy, I think this definitely hits the spot. If you've not read them, they are hugely fun, really easy reads. Uh, they would probably take most people a couple of days at most to polish off. Have you read these? Did you read them as a child, as an adult? What's your relationship to this series? Are you planning on picking them up if you haven't already? Let me know down in the comments below. While you're down there commenting, if you haven't already, please do subscribe. It makes me feel loved and appreciated. You can also come hang out on Discord where we have chill chats about books. I would like to say an enormous thank you to all the ghosts who haunt me over on Patreon. They support the channel and in return get early access to videos, bonus content, live streams, and more. If you'd like to join their number, that's linked below as well. Thank you so much to you for watching. That's all from me and I will see you in the next one.